Hello. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join me for this first in a series of four short videos entitled Easter in Four Locations. What we're going to do is over the next four weeks, we're going to look at four places in the New Testament that are associated with the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which of course is what Easter is all about. The first of these is a place we call the Garden of Gethsemane. And we can read about it in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. And let me read to you from verse 36. Then Jesus went with them, that's his disciples, to a place called Gethsemane. They said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. Taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. It's a remarkable prayer from the lips of the Lord Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. You can go and visit the Garden of Gethsemane today in modern day Israel. It's an ancient olive grove, an olive garden. And the word Gethsemane in Hebrew means olive press, olive press, whereby the olives would be pressed down to release the olive oil. And it's actually very apt because here the Lord Jesus is under great intense pressure. In fact, in Luke's account of um, this time of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, he records the fact that the Lord Jesus in his distress actually sweated drops of blood. And that's a attested medical condition. Uh, Luke was a doctor after all. And um, this can happen when somebody's under great emotional distress. Why was the Lord Jesus experiencing such sorrow and distress? It was because of what he referred to when he talked about this cup. Let this cup pass from me. What did he mean? What sort of cup was he referring to? Well, it's actually going back to the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible. And in the Old Testament, there is this picture of the cup of God's anger, the cup of his wrath, we sometimes call it. And it's a picture of suffering and judgment for those who have opposed God. Specifically, Jesus Christ was referring to the fact that in the next number of hours, he would be going to his death by crucifixion, that he would be dying on the cross. And when he died on the cross... He was bearing God's wrath and judgment. But you know, the Lord Jesus had never done anything that was wrong. He was the Son of God himself, pure and perfect and sinless. So why should he be bearing the judgment and, uh, and wrath of God? Well, it all goes back to what the Bible tells us, that all of us are sinners. We've all done wrong things. We've all done and said and thought things that are wrong and therefore we are separated from a holy and righteous God because of the sin that's in our lives. And yet God in his love has provided one way, just one way, for sinful people like me and like you to be reconciled, uh, to be made right in their relationship with a holy God. And it was that his spotless, pure, sinless son, Jesus Christ, yes, God himself in human form, should come down, and be born, of course, in a manger at Bethlehem to live a perfect, pure, spotless life. But then eventually, of course, after all the miracles and all the parables and all the teaching, to go to his death by crucifixion. That he would be crucified though he had done nothing wrong. And that crucifixion, that death of the Lord Jesus was paying the price that you and I deserve to pay. You see, the Bible tells us also that the price of sin is death. And therefore that price needs to be paid. And it was paid by the Son of God himself. God loved us so much to such an extent that he was willing to send Jesus Christ to die in our place on the cross. It's an amazing story that we call the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus. You see, why was he so determined? He said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Well, we find it later in that very same chapter. When the authorities come into that garden after Judas Iscariot has betrayed him, the authorities come to arrest him and take him away. And he says to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? 
Day after day I sat in the temple teaching and you did not seize me. And then here we have a crucial verse. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. You see, the whole Old Testament was pointing forward to the fact that there was going to come a Messiah. There was going to come a chosen Holy One of God who was going to uh, bring freedom for the captives. And although the Jews were expecting a, a national Messiah, somebody to free them from Rome, God sent something much more profound. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ into this world to save us from our sin, to provide a way that anybody could be forgiven of their sin. And that includes me, and that includes you. I wonder if you've ever been saved. I wonder if you've ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Saviour. You see, he died on the cross because he loves you. He died on the cross to pay the price for your sin. But that's not the end of the story. There would be no Easter if it was just the cross. But of course, three days later, just as he would promised he would, he rose from the dead. And we're going to look at that more in a couple of weeks' time. He rose from the dead. He could not be held by death. He conquered death. And therefore, he's actually alive today. And Christians believe, and the Bible teaches, that Jesus Christ is still alive today. And therefore, the offer of salvation, the offer of free forgiveness, is available. How will you respond to this? If you are still a sinner and you've never placed your faith and trust in Christ, then you need to do that. You need to ask him to save you. You need to accept him as your personal saviour from sin. I hope that this Easter you'll be able to celebrate your own saviour who rose from the dead having died to pay the price for your sins. There he was in the garden of Gethsemane and for love of you, for love of me, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Thank you for listening.